Forests of giant mushrooms the size of trees are commonplace in science fiction and fantasy. But there was once a time when they were a reality, and fungus did grow to the heights of small trees. Over 360 million years ago, a fungus named Prototaxites towered above its surroundings. At this point in history, during the early Devonian period, trees did not exist yet, let alone huge forests, and the tallest plants on land could grow no higher than a man's waist, making this giant fungus the tallest living thing on land. And so in a role reversal, the mushroom towered above the other plants creating an ecosystem so otherworldly it would fit perfectly in a science fiction story. The discovery of Prototaxites dates all the way back to 1843, but when it was discovered, no one had any idea that the fossils they were looking at were actually of a giant prehistoric fungus, and its true identity evaded discovery for over a century with it only really being found out in the 2000s. This was because it shared qualities from several different organism groups. From a distance, its meter-wide trunk made it look like the base of a tree, but under closer inspection, its body was made up of small tubes that looked a lot like hyphae, which are filaments that make up the body of a fungus. The first attempts to classify the new fossils concluded that it was a peculiar ancient conifer that fossilized while rotting and so was covered in fungus, which would explain why it had features from both groups. However, this theory was quickly swept aside, and it was later assumed that Prototaxites were large marine algae. And despite the overwhelming evidence that the organism grew on land, this version of Prototaxites as a marine plant was the most popular view of the large tree fungus for over a century, until as recently as 2001 when the specimens were re-examined and based on its internal structure, it was finally hypothesized that it may actually be a giant ancient fungus, although there was no conclusive proof. However, with modern technology, there was now a way that this could be found out, by studying their carbon isotopes. Specifically, the ratios between two common forms of carbon, carbon-12 and carbon-13. All plants absorb and metabolize carbon dioxide from the air, which means that their carbon ratios tend to be pretty consistent with the atmosphere of which they live in. And because all the plants found across a given ecosystem are getting their carbon from the same source, all of their ratios will be consistent with each other as well. However, organisms that get their carbon from their food, like animals, tend to look like whatever they eat, and so their ratios can vary wildly depending on their diet. A long time ago, fungus were classified as plants, However, it is now known that they are actually more closely related to animals, and consume their food rather than making it for themselves, like animals. Even though they chemically absorb their food rather than mechanically digest it, this still means that they will have carbon isotope ratios that will vary depending on the food they are eating. The carbon of Prototaxites was studied, and they were found to vary wildly even among fungus discovered from the same region which showed that Prototaxites must have got some of its food from its surroundings and not from the air like a plant would have, and therefore must have been a fungus. Their body didn't have the classic mushroom shape of many modern fungus, and instead their featureless tree trunk-like body would have towered 6 meters off of the ground on average, with one very large specimen almost reaching 9 meters. So compared with modern trees, this isn't that tall but for the time, in the Devonian period between 420 to 360 million years ago, they were the largest organisms on land. The Devonian was a transitional period, where land-dwelling creatures and plants had only very recently descended from aquatic ancestors, and were still evolving to solve the problems of living on land. This meant that the environment that surrounded these large fungus would have still been sparsely populated, and the plants that did inhabit the region would have been primitive, like mosses, lichen, liverworts, and a strange new extinct group of plants called Cooksonia that could grow no larger than a meter tall. So the Devonian landscape would have been incredibly strange, but also raises an important question. Modern day forests contain a large amount of large animals and plant life to feed on, and the mushrooms that feed off of these environments are much smaller in comparison. So how was such a large fungus able to absorb enough food if all the other organisms in its ecosystem were so much smaller? In the majority of cases, the bit of a fungus that sticks out of the ground is actually only the fruiting part that is used to spread their spores, technically known as the sporophore. 
and all of the eating is actually done underground in a network of roots known as mycelium that consume the energy from their environment. It would have been possible for Prototaxites to gather enough food as a normal fungus by just having a vast and far-reaching network of roots under the ground. Some modern mushrooms, like the honey mushroom, have incredibly far-reaching roots. In fact, one member of this species in Oregon measures almost two and a half miles across. This means they are able to absorb a massive amount of nutrients and food that could support large structures like Prototaxites. However, a lot of these modern giant fungus tend to still have small fruiting bodies. So why did Prototaxites grow to be so tall? Well, as the sporophore is used to spread spores, the taller it is, the further the spores will spread, and the greater chance they will have of being caught in the wind and spreading even further. However, large structures take a long time to grow, and a giant soft body fungus is a very easy target for large animals. During the Devonian period, like plants, animals were also only just starting to conquer the land, and at the time of Prototaxites, the world was only occupied by small animals like velvet worms and some arthropods like ancient scorpions and millipedes. And although there may have been some semi-aquatic amphibian ancestors that occasionally waddled across the land, there were no permanent vertebrate land dwellers at this time, and no permanent land residents larger than your hand. Because the Devonian had no large animals, Prototaxites had the luxury of being able to use a lot of resources into getting very large. However, in the case of modern fungus, because they are faced with the danger of being eaten by a large animal, they have put their eggs in multiple baskets. This may also be the reason why Prototaxites went extinct. Some fossils have been found with mazes of holes through them, with fungus regrowing into the open spaces, and many scientists believe that these holes were made by Devonian era creatures burrowing into these large structures for food or shelter. Prototaxites enjoyed a sparsely populated planet for a long time, but this would change by the end of the Devonian, when animals did start to get larger as single trees turned into forests, and the ecosystem started to get more complex, and Prototaxites may have been ill-equipped for this new world, and so went extinct at the end of the Devonian period, about 360 million years ago. Some researchers believe that the reason that Prototaxites was able to get so large was actually because they were able to photosynthesize, and weren't a normal fungus, but instead a lichen. Lichen are fungus, however they get all or some of their energy through a symbiotic relationship with algae cells contained within their body. The algae photosynthesize and expel waste that the fungus feeds on, meaning that lichen are capable of a sort of quasi-photosynthesis so they may have been able to photosynthesize, and so in a world predating trees, they may have filled a similar niche to a tree, and would explain how they were able to survive in an environment that was very barren by today's standards. However, for the time being, there doesn't seem to be a reliable way of finding out if these giant fungus were lichens, and more research will be needed to find out. So the ancient megafungus went extinct, as the bizarre early land ecosystems of the Devonian were swept away for the more complex forests of the Carboniferous. But Prototaxites and the strange ecosystem that it belonged to shows how the ancient Earth can sometimes be stranger than fiction. Thank you for watching. A big thank you go to all my Patreon supporters, especially the large contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.